This video is sponsored by DisabilityQuotes.com. They have been helping residents and also practicing physicians find the right type of disability insurance for the past 20 years. This is a type of insurance that ensures that your income continues in the event that you cannot continue practicing medicine. It's important. So important that I personally have disability insurance. Click on the link below in the description for a free quote from them today. Uh, my name is Tatiana Cardenas. I am a current Surgical Critical Care and Trauma Fellow at UT Health in San Antonio. Um, I completed my general surgery residency training here as well, and I'm a board certified general surgeon. I'll be taking my Surgical Critical Care board soon. Okay. Uh, wh why did you choose uh, general surgery when you were going through the years? Yeah, so um, I, I always knew in the back of my mind, I think, that I wanted to be a surgeon. Um, I went through medical school for you know my third year and all my uh, clinical rotations sort of with an open mind but um, knowing that I wanted to be more invasive than you know medicine um, instant gratification I think is probably <laughs> is probably it um, we're the definitive management for a lot of things um, and so that's that's I like working with my hands so I, I uh, that's why I wanted to be a surgeon and general surgery specifically I love being in the abdomen so I know that's usually where we hang out um, is in the abdomen um, unless you know you're doing trauma or uh, or surgeon or something like that but okay. and you had to become a general surgeon you had to do four years in med school and then five years of residency or is it, or is it pen per program so yeah so it's four years of med school uh, five years of residency um, those are your clinical years there are some programs that have a two-year research track built into them um, I have a friend who actually did research for three years because she got her PhD um, and so it just sort of depends on the program but it's definitely five five clinical years and then usually either two to three years if there's a research track built in between your second and third year of residency okay and you mentioned that you're a current uh, critical care uh, trauma surgeon why did you choose uh, to do a fellowship in trauma surgery? Um, so trauma surgery has always been uh, a passion of mine. Um, it's sort of the acuity of of the clinical conditions that we're sort of presented with is is always been something that I've I've been interested in. Um, keeps you on your toes. It's it's challenging uh, just because you don't have a month or two weeks to plan for a surgery. You have two minutes. Um, and you sort of have to figure out based on an algorithm what's going on um, and you know you're not always able to do a CT scan depending on how the patient's doing so um, you know I've, I've always enjoyed that it, it, it's it's the excitement of it um, and it, you know it's the fact that these people are really counting on us it's it's truly a life and death situation so um, we're you know we're truly we're, we're helping out um, the other reason why trauma um, uh, is because it's all comers so no matter race creed religion whatever it is they'll come in and we will help them um, they're unstable we have to help them and so I, I love the fact that I don't have to deal with insurance <laughs> Yeah, gotcha. and what about the people who think that they may be interested in general surgery or trauma surgery but they're kind of turned by turned away by the lifestyle or the hours can you speak a little bit about that yeah, um, it's definitely one of those things that uh, you gotta love. Um, if you if you love operating and you know you you want to be in the operating room and you love being in the abdomen, I think it's totally worth it. Um, the duty hours have changed over the years. It, residency overall um, is residency's difficult. That's usually just how it goes. Um, it's it's difficult because you're usually drinking from a water hose, a fire hose. It feels like because you get so much information thrown at you, um, no matter what subspecialty you go into. Um, you know, for me particularly, trauma surgery. I, it's great at an academic or level one trauma center, which is where I'll be next year, um, just because it's it's turning into more of a shift work type of 
profession, um, you know, once you, you know, you're on trauma call for 24 hours or you're in the surgical ICU on call and, you know, the next day you sort of, you wrap things up and you go. Um, and you've got partners that, you know, are on call after you and they help take care of your patients uh, if they bounce back or, or whatever it is. So it's, it's nice to be in a group uh, setting in that aspect in terms of being at a level one trauma center. Um, did I answer that question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And as a uh, trauma surgeon, what is a typical day for you? Kind of starts at what time and ends at what time? And I know this may be a little bit different the way your structure may be next year or your schedule may be next year sure. as a staff, but what is a typical day for you? Um, so typical day uh, depends on where I am. If I'm in the surgical ICU, um, usually, you know, we come in at around six and, and probably leave around four or five uh, once things are done. If I'm on call uh, or on trauma call, uh, so downstairs in the ER and, and operating in the OR, it's usually a 24-hour period that starts around um, 8 a.m. for staff. Um, for the residents, it's around you know six or seven, uh, and that's a 24-hour call, and it gets pretty busy. Um, here, we also cover emergency general surgery, so um, not only do we do the traumas, but we also do you know uh, appendicitis and. Uh, cholecystitis, bowel obstructions, diverticulitis, all of the general surgery conditions that are requiring more urgent or emergent interventions. Um, and so we take care of those patients as well. So in a 24-hour period, I mean, we'll have anywhere between um, maybe 30 to 45, depending on the day uh, and the time of year, admissions. Um, uh, and so it's, it's nonstop because we're operating 24-7, which is awesome. Um, and we do all sorts of operations. Uh, we operate on a lot of, obviously, the surgical ICU patients. You know, once they, you know, gunshot wounds, stab wounds, all that stuff, we stabilize them, bring them up to the ICU. If they need to come back for abdominal washouts, we'll do those. We do a lot of abscesses. We do a lot of gallbladders and appendices. We also do tracheostomies in patients who are, you know, have prolonged ventilator dependence. So we work in the neck a lot, um, especially if there's, you know, penetrating trauma to the neck. It's, it's usually going to be explored. Um, and in the chest, we also work. So it, it's it's nice because it's a varied, a, a varied form of of a, of a surgical practice. So. Gotcha. And such a busy work schedule. Uh, any life hacks or things that you use to uh, stay organized or yeah. work life balance? Yeah, I so work life balance is super important. I think as a surgeon, especially um, you know as a female surgeon, just by virtue of the fact that. You know, we carry the babies, not y'all. <laughs> um, so work-life balance, I think, is very important. I uh, I try to leave my work at work. Um, we rarely take home call as a trauma surgeon because we're at a level one trauma center. We're in house, so it's it's. I like that. I prefer that personally um, when I'm on call as opposed to taking home call. Uh, just because it's you're sort of spread out or you don't really know what's going to happen. Do I need to go into the hospital? You know, 24-hour trauma call, you're in-house, and, you know, that's that. Um, and then once I leave, I, I make sure all my notes are done, and I just I go home. So I think the, one of the more important things is leave work at work um, and and really have, have something that you love doing. Um, I think that's probably important throughout residency for any resident uh, going into whatever it is, but have something that you love to do. So whether it's, you know, go for a quick run or playing baseball or uh, dancing or whatever it is, um, have a hobby because it's a nice release and I think that's important too. Okay, any tips for expiring uh, trauma surgeons, general surgeons, or just pre-med students in general? What kind of tips would you give them? Yeah, I, I usually tell people don't let anyone say that you can't. Um, don't let a stigma associated with, you know, oh my gosh, this trauma surgery, they don't have lives. Like, seek people out, um, ask questions, have mentors, um, allow them to guide you through what's going on nowadays. It's, it's, it's different, um, you know, than even probably 20, 30 years ago. Um, it's still hard work, but it's very rewarding in the end. Um, and like I said, don't you probably there were a few times along the way that I got a little bit discouraged, you know, through med school and residency. It's tough. Um, it's tough getting to be a you know physician in general. So um, keep your head up and and keep it moving. You can do it. The sky's the limit. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> no problem.